بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على حبيبنا وشفيعنا محمد وعلى آله وصحابه طيبين وطاهرين الحمد لله as one of the earlier speakers also started الحمد لله is a word that I love it uh, takes out all anxiety all stress all burden when you let it come from down I mean if you say الحمد لله it doesn't do anything but it depth of your inner being, it really relieves you. Alhamdulillah. And it was the first word said by Satan Adam salam, after Allah created him. So it's a good start. Alhamdulillah. Anyway, uh, I'm going to speak about the family structure or something related to that according to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. He was, as we have heard already, one of the most outstanding figures in the history of mankind. I would say the most outstanding. I mean, out of all the billions and billions of people that Allah planned from the beginning for this creation, he picked him, him, to be the one to deliver the final message for mankind. May the choicest blessings of Allah and peace be upon him. And he allowed us to call ourselves followers of him, mashallah. This is a great, great gift from Allah. My speech will be around what uh, the Prophet وسلم, said in a very well-known statement, khayrukum, khayrukum li The best man is the one who's best towards his wife. Now, obviously, it's not just the man having this obligation towards his wife, it's also the woman having this obligation towards her husband. We have to be good, we have to be kind, we have to treat each other the best. And the best means the best at any time. Knowing that and recognizing that best today may be here and best tomorrow may be here, but we, we always have to do our best towards each other as husband and wife. And we're certainly never, ever allowed deliberately to harm or hurt the other. Unfortunately, this does take place many times, even within Muslim families. You talk bad to me, now how can I get back to you in an even worse way? That's no go. I do a lot of marriage counseling in Denmark, and I... I see these people sitting in front of me, insulting each other, uh, bad-mouthing each other, foul-mouthing each other. I, I mean, how can, this, how can this be? Don't we understand this profound message of the Prophet khayrukum, khayrukum Or do we think it only means sometimes? Now if Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had said, khayrukum, khayrukum yawm al khamis the best man is one who's best towards his wife on Thursdays. We would know, well, then this, this goes on Thursdays, and the other days it doesn't matter. But he didn't limit it, neither by time nor by action. He didn't say anything about limiting this to be at any specific time or any specific event. This means it goes always. And we should understand that our relations as husband and wife are dependent on our own behavior. If I treat you well, inshallah, you will treat me well. If I treat you bad, inshallah, you will still treat me well if you follow the, the, the words of Prophet Muhammad But if we are as people are most, then if somebody treats us well, we are inclined to treat that person uh, bad as, uh, too. I mean, if somebody treats you bad, you want to treat him bad. That's the normal human reaction. But that is not what our beloved Prophet وسلم, advised us. He advised us always to treat each other well. So if I treat my wife well, I should expect her to treat me well. If she treats me well, she should expect me to treat her well. So if she doesn't treat me well, what should I do then? First of all, I should look into myself and I should think about what I have to do to make her treat me better. What is it in my way of treating you that makes you treat me the way you treat me? And how can I change it? Obviously, I can change it by becoming a better version of myself. And isn't that what it's all about? 
I mean, when, when, when we take Islam, when we pray, when we fast, when we pay zakat, when we go for pilgrimage, when we do whatever we do, isn't it all about upgrading our system, our, our platform, or our, uh, our operating system? Isn't that what it's all about? Getting better day by day, becoming a better version of ourselves today than we were yesterday? That, of course, goes in marriage, too which, of course, is one of the very important uh, fields of development that we have. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that in marriage we can complete half of our deen. The other half, he said, was in taqwa to Allah. So, if we don't understand the importance of the marriage as being this kind of fertile soil for developing ourselves, we missed out an important point. And this development, of course, only happens if we try to focus on what he said, alayhi salatu salam, regarding marriage. So if I think my wife doesn't treat me well enough, the first thing I have to do is look into myself. As Allah says in the Quran, Inna Allah, la ma hatta ma Allah certainly doesn't change anything for people until or unless they change anything for themselves. So, first place we look is into ourselves. Can I do something better? Answer is always yes. Yes. And why? Because no matter how much I strive to better myself, no matter how much I strive to improve myself, I will never ever get at the level of the Sahaba, Ashab al Kiram, radiallahu anhum ajma'in. Because again, out of billions and billions of people that Allah put into his creation, he picked these few people to be around Habib Allah sallallahu alayhi wa So they were something else. They were, as Allah says, khayra umma, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijaltin nas. They were the best umma that has ever been. We cannot reach their level, not to speak of the level of their guide Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there's always room for improvement. Always, always room for improvement. That's what we have to look at. That's what we have to strive for. We have to understand that Allah has given us this beautiful gift of Islam for us to become better. And there's no place where we can do that better than in marriage. There are levels of inner development that a man cannot reach alone or a woman cannot reach alone but that man and woman can reach together because we can complement each other and lift each other towards the highest of whatever we can achieve in this world and that can only be done in marriage subhanallah marriage is so important and one thing we should remember here also is even when we disagree. I have an opinion, my wife has another opinion. Then we get into an argument. Many of us tend to argue with our husband or our, or our wife, same way as we would argue with anybody else. But that's wrong. You can't do that. Because normally when you disagree with somebody, when you argue with somebody, you want to prove the other wrong in order for you to be right. But don't ever forget that once you marry, you team up with your husband or your wife. You're on the same team. You want to be a winner, the other's got to be a winner. You make the other one a loser, you become a loser. So we have to find ways of accommodating for the other to become a winner. And normally that's pretty easy. Uh, because most of the arguments we have as husband and wife are stupid arguments. Like, what should we see on Netflix? Or should we order for Thai food or Indian food? Or uh, which uh, chairs uh, should we buy for our kitchen or whatever? I mean, stupid arguments. Give in, say, you want it that way, you have it that way. It's no problem, and both will be winners. One by following the example of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the other by getting whatever he or she wants. This way we can easily accommodate. And if we, as parents, if we make each other winners, that is If we make each other losers, that's what we're going to pass on to our kids. So for our own sake, for the sake of our kids, 
Do we want a community of winners or of losers? That's up to us. Inshallah. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.